helping us out with the final clue <laughs> for tonight's mystery guest. Yes, the show is Skippy, the bush Duh. kangaroo. <laughs> Remember Clancy, though, oh. the teenage girl who was visiting Waratah Park from England. Well, she's back again. Lisa Goddard has come all the way from the UK to be here tonight. Would you please make her welcome? <laughs> English girl came to uh, to get such a starring role in such a classic Aussie drama. Well, I'm not really sure. My, I, my father came out here in '65 to be head of drama at the ABC, and we came out. My uh, the family came out as well, and I started working in the theatre. And then I went along for an interview for a new series that they were making called Skippy the Bush Kangaroo. Uh, they wanted uh, a girl. And much to my amazement, I got it. But I mean, I was a classical actress at the time. Oh, you're so cute oh. back then. You are now, too. It was the late 60s. Skippy yeah. bounded into our living room. It won Logies. I know, we it had no idea. It was shown on 80 countries around the world. Did you ever think it would get that big? No. I had no idea it would be uh, so well known overseas. In fact, when I left in 69, when the show finished, I went to Japan. I got off the plane, and all these people at the airport with posters and limousines and everything. I thought, oh, I must have been on the plane with somebody really famous. I'm looking around thinking, I wonder who it was. And it was me. <laughs> and it was incredible. It was the most extraordinary thing. Oh, Skippy was also the most extraordinary thing. Uh, Clancy was always getting into trouble. Yes, and, yes, yes. You know, always. did it ever cease to amaze you how smart Skippy was? Skippy was so smart. Mm. I mean, Clancy was rescued. Or, Clancy was really stupid. I mean, she got her foot caught in a rock and the waves, water was coming over her head. And Skippy went and got a reed so that she could breathe. Oh, until, that was until, a classic. That was fantastic. Until, that was a so she could then go back to the homestead and get Matt to come and rescue her. Oh, always, always getting in trouble. From, go and get help, Skippy. I think it was one of my main lines. Actually. Was one kangaroo really that smart? Uh, no, no. And I don't know if you say, but you, you can't train a kangaroo. And in fact, most of them were wallabies because, of course, the kangaroos grew too big, so we had a lot of wallabies. Uh, most but of we them had about many? 20. Oh. So but it was a, she was a sheep? Well, some of them were she's. Oh. And occasionally oh. there are shots. So you notice probably at the beginning where Skippy is bounding along the horizon, it's patently not a she. <laughs> patently not. But mostly, they were completely untrained, mm. and it required a prop man. So you had Skippy here, do you doing a scene with Skippy, and there'd be a prop man lying on the floor, holding onto the tail. <laughs> <laughs> and they also weren't house trained either, so the whole set was covered in oh. kangaroo wee and poop. Oh, could have been. Now, I'm just thinking. I'd <laughs> you're now going to say they don't go. No, they don't. No, the kangaroos make what? it. They go, <laughs> which of course is not a very attractive. <laughs> Oh. Which is not a terribly attractive noise, you know. So, in fact, it was a brilliant sound engineer who thought up. And I, think did I, I think I need therapy all of this. <laughs> you've, just, you've just destroyed every myth about <laughs> Skippy that I ever learnt. Waratah Park, though, was fictitious. Yes. Um, I understand, though, that you've just visited this week yes. for the first time. In 37 years. It's wow. absolutely incredible. It hasn't changed at all. Let's take a look at your skip down memory lane. Right. Spectacular this is. Just glorious. It's beautiful. But to introduce you to a lot of Australian animals, yes. emus, yeah. oh, yes. wallabies, and yeah. possums, wombats. Yeah. Whole, if there was one animal here in Australia you could take home, what would it be? Well, I would have said the koala because they were so enchanting oh. and they were so good. They were one of the few animals really good on set. You just put a koala, for example, on an ironing board and you just give it leaves and it sit there, chew leaves. And, around. <laughs> and then it would run out of leaves and go, oh, run out of leaves. And you go, okay, more leaves. And they go, oh, more leaves. They cute, all day. They were, but then the other day I met a little oh, baby possum, a little miniature possum. And it went down and <laughs> nestled in my bra. And I thought, oh, I could take this home. They wouldn't notice at all. Uh. And straight to sleep. It was lovely. Well, I don't know what we can do about the baby possum, mm -hmm. but I'd like you to meet Hogan. Oh. 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 There, see, eating leaves, perfectly happy. Just give them leaves. Lisa, thank you for coming out. Oh, it's been a great pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Very Lovely. nice to hey, meet Hogan. you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you thank Lisa for that? See you soon. We'll see you on Sunrise.